The tags in a Java server page fall into categories. So far, we've just been using one. We've been using the scripting tag, which simply inserts executable code inside the method of the produced object. This has been regular Java code, creating objects, executing loops, and making calls to the methods of implicit objects. You've seen the tags that look like this. The opening and closing can be on one line, like this, or, as you have seen, they can be spread out over several lines. There's another way to write this same set of tags. You can use the XML form like this. The two are exactly alike. They have exactly the same result. The first one is the JSP style, the shorthand style, if you prefer, and the other is the XML style. Another type of tag is the directive or declarative element. This is for declaring things that exist for the life of the object. The tag is almost the same, but it does include that exclamation point at the beginning. This tag also has an XML form, and it looks like this. There's nothing mysterious about this. If you need to declare something that is outside of any particular method, you use this tag. You can declare variables here that are available to every method that you declare in the class. If you want to write some methods of your own, you would use this tag, because whatever code you write using this tag will be placed inside the class definition, but outside of any method. The third category of tags is the expression tag. The expression tag uses an equal sign, and it looks like this. And it also has an XML form, and it looks like this. An expression is something that's evaluated to become a string and is displayed as text. You can use Java code elements in here, but this is more than just Java. There's a special expression language you can use in here to make evaluations. I'll be showing you some of that later. I need to make one important point. You cannot mix the two types of tags. If you use the JSP style of tag in one place, you must use it for every tag on the page. The page must be consistent throughout. Okay, those are the three main categories, but there are a couple of more. Here's one with its own special purpose. You're familiar, of course, with the HTML comment tag. It looks like this. And, of course, you can include this comment in a JSP page. This comment is part of the HTML code and becomes a comment that's in the final HTML page. Now, there is also a JSP tag that looks like this. This comment will be just taken out of the code by the translator and will not appear in the final HTML page. A final category is the directive category. There are a number of different kinds of directives, and each directive requires a keyword. The most common directive keyword is page, and it looks like this. There are a number of attributes that can be set for the page. They go where the three dots are shown in the format, and it has an XML format, too. One directive that comes in handy is the include directive. For example, the file you name can be the path name of any file, and it will be included just as if it had been cut and pasted into the JSP file at this point.